This Velux pushes in the perfect light to distract me from seeing my screen. Like the window could not have been positioned any worse. Or some may say this desk couldn't have been positioned <laughs> any worse than it has been because that gets in my face every single day. And I do this. <laughs> Yesterday was a little bit of a washout actually. I um, kind of took a little bit of time to rest and relax. Uh, but I'm back on it today. I'm just going to jump on the computer and finish editing off an IGTV, um, which I do enjoy doing, I have to admit. It's probably one of the most satisfying parts of the job is coming to the end of creating something. So like just finishing up and then getting to enjoy what it is that you've created, video, picture, whatever it is, the end product. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that first uh, and enjoy a cup of coffee. And then I'm going to head downstairs and start doing some house DIY, kind of DIY. I feel like because I was a qualified electrician, doing electrical work isn't really like DIY. I know, do it yourself. I am doing it myself. But anyway, we're going to go down and put some lights up in the dining room. Lydia has bought two new wall lights and a new centre light. So uh, I promised her that before she got back from Verona, I would have those lights up. She gets back today. So um, I better be quick, get this finished, and then get ready to head down and uh, get cracking on with some electrics. So yeah, I'll catch up with you in probably an hour or so, get this finished up, and then we'll go get busy. Back on the tools. So we finally finished editing and as you can see it's starting to get a little bit dark outside but I'm pretty happy with how that edit turned out to be fair. It just took a little bit longer than I anticipated with the sounds. Sometimes I find using the right key search words to find the sounds that I'm looking for I find really tricky especially because a lot of the sound effects are probably supplied by Americans so the language that they would use to describe something wouldn't be necessarily the way in which we would describe it in English or the UK. So it means that you'd be searching for a word and then you can't find it and then you'll find it and you'd be like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense because in America they'll say trash instead of rubbish, um, just as an example. So if you were looking for rubbish bag sounds, they would write trash bag sounds. And of course, you're not going to find it if you're searching for the wrong words. But anyway, finally we got there and um, the videos exported and ready to go so i thought just whilst we have got a little bit of light left i'm going to do my very best to get that light there and the two wall lights switched over with the new fittings which you can just see here and then up on the side there's also two wall lights that i need to replace i promised lids as i said i think earlier that i'd get these done before she gets back from italy when lydia has been away on a trip i actually quite like to get the house like immaculate so when she comes home the house is nice for her because I'd like to receive that same treatment and I do, she does the same for me. So kind of like an unwritten rule as to when somebody comes back off a trip, the house is in a really tidy, clean state. A, because it just creates a more relaxed environment and also because when you come back off of a trip, you've got lots of washing to do, everything just feels a lot more chaotic. You should see the amount of pose that Liz has got downstairs in her office. So with all of that to come back to, the last thing you want is to be in a house that's messy, untidy and creates more work for yourself. So yeah, after I finish fitting these lights, I'm going to do my best to whiz around with a hoover, tidy the house up and get it in a good order, 
ready for when she comes home this evening for about 9 p.m. Try and get the fire on and stuff as well. You know, brownie points. You listening, lads, you listening. Before she turns up, I'm gonna get busy switching these over. And just, by the way, I really like the light fittings in here. This is a Sputnik kind of like light. It's so heavy. Uh, when I installed it in the ceiling, I had to put a big piece of wood down to kind of like brace it because how heavy it is. It's actually made out of, I think, like solid brass. Like each of those rods weigh. Like it's a weighty light. I think we're going to keep hold of it, but I'm not sure of that. You never know with lids. Uh, but she has been working really hard to do all the interior designs. And she's told me that, yes, it's an amazing light, Ali. However, I think that this light fitting will look better and more suited in this room. And I need to start trusting her a lot more because everything else in the house that she's made an executive decision on is turned out to be really, really lovely. So I'm gonna switch these over. Fingers crossed, they look good. Um, I'm sure they will. And then I'm gonna get busy, so let's go. Literally, the cable couldn't be in a worse position. The light fixtures that she's brought couldn't be more inconsiderate towards the installer, which is always the case with electrical light fittings. Like they give you this much room to fit your wires in. The walls that you fix to are just crap. Look. I don't know if any of you will understand what I'm showing, but my bracket has to fit this way. It has to be centralised, the cable runs like that, straight down the wall and the fixing and the top of the bracket, there's no real room so the bracket needs to be above where the cable comes out and the fixing wants to be there. So I've got to either work a way of sort of like cutting the side out, moving the cable out of the way, doing a fixing but as you can see the hole that's cut out which is centralised to the wall, we have got to move all the lights up and redo it and then this will all need to be patched up I mean the old lights already left the marks this is already going to need to be redecorated um, but yeah to do a job quickly isn't going to be straightforward here today annoyingly so a little update as you can see not much progress this is <laughs> oh. I'd like to say it's because I'm a bit rusty but I feel very competent in fitting a light it's kind of like I don't know, I can't think of an analogy. Just a really bad design, like aesthetically, obviously they look amazing and I appreciate and I understand that that is the whole aesthetic, having quite a slim line and small base to the light fitting. And it's not necessarily uncommon either, like lots of light fittings have this issue. Um, I think it's just a couple of scenarios that have made this a little bit trickier than I wanted it to be. And to be fair, I kind of always knew I was gonna get into a little bit of trouble because I'm taking off bases that were circular and about twice the size um, and then putting these smaller fittings on. So I kind of knew that I was going to have to do some remedial work. Yeah, I know. It's me and Looney. We're having a nightmare, aren't we, darling? Yeah, I know. But we're getting through it, aren't we? <laughs>
We, so, we finally got there in the end. We've only got three lamps for this fitting and they're not the right lamps. We need to get round lamps uh, that are stubby because you can just see the tips of the candles sticking out the top. That's not a thing. So uh, we're gonna get six new lamps for there. We've got some LED ones. There's already LED lamps in the wall lights over there. Um, I'm actually not happy with the fixing of this light fitting, so I'm gonna redo it, but I'm just not gonna be doing that this evening because time is ticking. So yeah, I thought I'd just quickly share with you what they look like when they're on, on their own. It's a lot more calmer and soothing and warming um, than the last lights. I definitely say that. I think the lampshades reflect a really soft, warm light. So they're lovely for winter. This is what they look like. So we've continued the kind of like brass theme in the room, which works really nicely. So yeah, hopefully Lydia will be home soon and we can get her verdict. The room feels more balanced um the light is still quite a center point but the last light literally ate all of the attention in this room um i feel like the lampshades complement the curtains and the curtain pole and stuff like that so very happy miss millen gordon i feel like she's nailed it again making all those right decisions right i need to get this room back in order tidy all this up and get the house ready I actually brought some wood in earlier to restock in the lounge. And you just want to go outside. You're very vocal at this time of night, aren't you? Hey? Pardon? What's up? trying to work out whether this camera is focused or not but the lounge is ready uh, I've just stocked the log basket that's over here so we use this blanket to cover up all of the small pieces of wood just got the fire going <laughs> soft feel now isn't it yeah obviously the um the lamps are wrong yeah and there's only three yeah, yeah. but Thank you looks good doesn't it yeah. so for dinner tonight we're going to be having the ali g special that is a crispy tomato cheese pasta bake it's easy it's fast and it tastes delicious so let's get cracking First up, gluten-free pasta. Next up, passata. Tortilla chips. Cheese. Tomato puree. Salt. Pepper. Oven pot. 200 degrees. An Italian once told me, before you put the pasta in, make sure the water's boiling hot. Grated garlic. A tablespoon of olive oil. In with that pasta, on cow olive oil. Oven pot. You're gonna need a serving spoon. When your pasta is sufficiently cooked, drain the water. Stick the pan back on the hob, add your passata. Give that a good stir in with a wooden spoon. Add a tablespoon of puree. 
some seasoning, garlic. Be looking something a little bit like this right now. Next step, grated cheese. Now, I could have bought grated cheese, but I decided that it was about time we made Britain great again. Now, once this has been left on the hob for about five minutes, it's time to stick it in our oven pot. Now my friends, this is where the magic happens. We are gonna grate an even layer of cheese over the top of the pasta. And we're gonna get our Doritos and we're gonna crack and poke. Now once you've created a nice even layer of crisps over the top, Nicely poked into your pasta. Add your last little bit of cheese just to go over the top and then we're ready to stick it in the oven. Come on, it's dinner. So there we have it. That was 30 minutes in the kitchen with AMG. And if you have any questions regarding that very complex, sophisticated dinner, message me. Happy to answer any questions that you need. Right. It's time to put out the candles, get the telly box on. At the moment we're watching Captive on Netflix. There is, I think, 11 episodes. Each episode is about a different um, hostage uh, environment. And so far we've watched three or four. I think we're on the fifth. Uh, we're just about to start it. I'm not sure what it's about but there's been some pretty interesting ones and they're all very different. Also very scary, like some are sort of kept hostage for uh, a few weeks and some have been kept hostage for like hundreds of days. So uh, yeah, it's cool. So we're gonna watch that and then we're gonna get to sleep, aren't we? Very, very tired. So thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy my video. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Peace.